Hello, my name is Anne, and this gruffy looking little chap is Toby. Welcome to a Toby Knits podcast, episode 131. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Grab a cup of tea, you're going to need it. We're talking all about the knitting today. If you are a returning viewer, you know what to do. And I just pushed him off the couch. And to all my new subscribers, whoa, that's awesome. Thanks for taking a look and giving me some thumbs up and sticking around because this is the place to be. This is the place to be, believe me. Yes, it is. Okay, so <clears throat> I do have a cup of tea because as you can tell, I still don't have my voice 100% yet, which to my husband's delight. Um, you know, it's been a long haul. I don't think I've ever been this sick for so long in years. In fact, I don't think I've ever been that sick. Ever. No. Anyway, <clears throat> what's been going on in Tobyland? Well, Tuesday, my brother-in-law came up from Petawawa with his wife and um, we had a fabulous day. They took um, our trailer, my husband and his brother, took our trailer down to the campsite that we're leaving it on for the summer this year. Typically, we travel to different campsites throughout Ontario um, in the summer, but this year we've decided, because of the cost of gas and um, the fact that we sold our truck, um, it was a little bit impossible to tow, so. We've decided to put it on a campsite, which I'm super excited about. I'll definitely be taking you along and showing you some videos from there. Um, it's right down by the St. Lawrence uh, water. It's beautiful. And I'm hoping if there is not a knitting group, I'm going to start one. Anyway, <clears throat> we're hoping to spend a fair amount of our summers down there. Between that and going backwards and forwards to Nova Scotia to see the lovely Leo. Uh, so, so that happened on Tuesday and they stayed overnight and, uh, we went out for dinner. It was nice. And then we came back and played Mexican train dominoes. Okay. So has anybody ever played that? It is such a fun game to play. It's kind of like regular dominoes that I always remember my grandfather playing, but you all have a train. So instead of the one big line in the middle that you have to deal with it. Everyone has their own train. And then if you can't go on your turn, you have this little tiny train that you put up on your um, domino train. And then other people can play on yours. Oh, it's so much fun. It really is. Anyway, so we had a lot of fun playing that. And they stayed the night. And then, uh, yeah. So then Thursday, uh, we had, I went out for lunch with Megan's mom and a bunch of ladies, and that was tons of fun. We got to all check out each other's new Leo pictures and stuff, you know, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Saturday, of course, was the coronation, and so my father was a little bit uh, perturbed. I did not get up at 6 a.m. to watch it. No, I didn't, Dad, sorry. Um, my brother was like, well, you get up at 7 o'clock to watch Formula One. How come you can't get up at 6 a.m. to watch it? I'm like, well, that's a f of course I don't get up at 7 for Formula One. No, not getting up that early for the coronation. But anyway, I did get up at 7. <clears throat> and I missed all the part where everybody was coming in all dolled up and arriving and taking their seats. But I saw the main part. I saw him get ground and all the rest of it. So, you know, um, so that was good. Watched all that. Then, of course, Liverpool played, so I watched that game, and that was great because we won one nothing. And then um, and then it was qualifying for the F1, so I watched that. So it was like a brilliant day. And then last night, I uh, couldn't find anything interesting to watch. If there's any good shows you can think of, uh, let me know down below because I was kind of running out of something, something to watch. And I came across... Um, and I'd watched the first two seasons of it. Of course, now I can't think of the name. It's a British TV show. It's 
when they, they, they find all these old, old, unforgotten, unforgotten, that was it, when they find all these old bodies and then they have to try to work out what happened and who they were. Uh, so season three was on and I didn't know if I wanted to watch it because at the end of season two, the main cop, well, I'm not going to say what happened, but she didn't come out. And um, <clears throat> so I wasn't sure if I was going to like the new one. But I actually did enjoy it, and because I must have enjoyed it, I watched six of them all in a row. As you do. Anyway, I've waffled on for five minutes about all the things I've done this week and haven't done. Haven't had Tristan yet. We still haven't uh, got back to taking him on a regular basis. <coughs> but I do miss the little turkey. I really do. You know, like hmm. I called you know, my son Andrew today, and I could hear Tristan in the background yelling so I said put him on and I was like hello Tristan it's your Nana speaking and he was like hello Nana hello Papa <laughs> Papa wasn't on the phone and I was like uh, what are you doing I have to go and do something <laughs> anyway I miss him but hopefully uh, we'll see him uh, this week I'm hoping so even if it's just I think they might be coming for dinner I don't know anyway We've, we've digressed long enough. You're probably all bored to death now when you're like, Anne, would you please get on with it now? We want to know what you've been knitting. So, do you remember ages ago when I was cross-stitching and knitting and sewing, I was having a hard time keeping up with everything. So in my daytime and my planner, because I do have a physical planner, um, I would write down each day of the week what project I was going to work on so that, you know, I knew and I could keep on track and not forget something. Like I tried to forget the dishcloth last month, you know. <clears throat> so I've done that with my knitting because I actually have seven projects on the go. Seven whips. No finished objects this week, but I have seven whips because I cast on three new ones last week. So I'm going to tell you which ones I knit or crochet on what days of the week and show you them. So the first is Monday. On Mondays, I knit the May socks. Now, I've got that many bags in front of me here. I have to find it. This is my Carson bag. And it has a zipper on the front with a pocket and no pocket inside and a zipper here. And it holds everything you need for socks or a small, you know, a cowl or a shawl. Um, and all my bags, the reason I'm telling you about the bags is because I'm in the middle of starting to do a bunch more. So a bunch more of these bags, because yes, I did make this. And what I do is I name my bags because I have three different bag designs. There's actually two others, but I don't make them as much anymore um, that I make and put in the shop because they sell them the better ones. And um, they're all named after my family. So the Carson bag is named after my husband's um, mother. That was her um, main name. So in the Carson bag with my May hand dyed yarn, which is Lily of the Valley, are the Summer Folly socks. Now, I cannot remember the name of the um, designer, but I'll put it here. And here is how it is so far. So it's um, all, it's all going to be this rib, but there's a really unique pattern to it going down the front of the sock. <clears throat> but this is the cuff, and it's nipped, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um twisted rib. So it's knit one, knit through the back loop, and so on. So this is what I've done so far. We had to do 25 rounds of that. So that is the cuff and the, the front of the foot because they're short socks. I, the, these are, I didn't want long socks. Um, I like either shorty shorties or mid-length socks. I don't like ones that have a big leg. Um, cause I hate knitting that long, um, on them. So now I'm just on 
<clears throat> the um, gusset and I've done the heel, not the gusset. Well, yes, I'm on the gusset, but I did the heel flap and the heel turn. Now, interesting thing about this heel flap is typically, and when you've been knitting socks as long as I have, you don't always really read the pattern. You kind of glance at it and then you're like, oh, I know what I'm doing and you just do it, right? <clears throat> well, sometimes that's where you can mess up. I've done that, like the, I think the last pair of socks I did, I didn't do the correct heel. Yeah, I didn't do the correct heel flap, sorry, because I wasn't paying attention. I just did my usual slip one, knit one. And there was another one I didn't do something because I didn't read the pattern properly. So now I'm trying to make sure I read the patterns properly. And I'm glad I did because, of course, I started doing the slip one, knit one for this, right? Then I realized, oh, that's not right. Because we have to slip, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, to get to the end. And then you have two knits because it is lining up with this because it would not line up with that if you did not add that extra slip one read the pattern girls so now i'm on the gusset just got out all the stitches on picked up my edge stitches and got them all on and i'm ready and this is how i do mine i uh, separate the heel and uh, knit my heel then uh, well first of all i guess you pick up your stitches and then I split my front in half, putting my marker here, and then the other one on the other side. And then I get up to the heel and split the heel. And then I make the front of the heel the beginning around, instead of where it usually is. And um, that's my little daisy stitch marker, isn't it cute? I love it, um, even though these are not daisy socks, but I would like to use my daisy flower all summer. So these are coming on really good. I'm very happy with them. And I love the yarn. It's so soft and squishy. It's an 80-20, so it's 80% merino, 20% nylon. Um, it doesn't have a biggest yardage as the other ones that I typically buy. This is 370 yards. Typically the others are about 400. Um, but the, but that makes this, the skein is squishier. So it's easier for me to mail to people. Um, and it's mailed here in Canada, in Ontario, which is great for me um, because then I'm not paying all kinds of exchange rates and um, for ordering from the US. And I'm also not paying any extra duties. So, and I get it the next day when I order it. So I love getting this yarn. <coughs> um, I picked up um, a bunch of skeins of this sock weight. Um, and then I've also picked up uh, some BFL, some Earth. What's the other one? Earth Friendly. Earth Friendly. Don't ask me what that is but I'm gonna dye one up and see what it's like. Um, and um, some 100% merino, fingering weight, some worsted weight, some DK. Anyway, I bought a bunch of it all. So if you see a color in my store, in my Etsy store, link will be below for that. Um, whatever color is there, because I dye to order. I'll either dye four up and put them in the shop and once those four are gone, they're gone. Or I will dye to order if it's all my birth month ones. So if you see, suddenly pick it up and think, oh, that January one's pretty and you want that, I can do it. But I can also do it on the different bases for you as well. Oh, I haven't figured out how to say that in Etsy. But anyway, I'll get there. Um, <clears throat> so that one was my Monday which is um, Summer Folly. So Tuesday is the Beachcomber uh, by um, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And this is a Patreon only pattern. I don't know if she'll eventually release it as, a, I think she probably will. 
Um, but for now it's Patreon only and it's the summer of stitching that we're doing, which started last week. And we will knit these socks, then we're gonna do a cross stitch, then we're gonna turn the cross stitch into a project bag. And this is gonna last us all summer. Um, but I decided I wanted to make myself a new project bag with a summer feel. Look at this. Oh, this, I am in love with this bag. This is the Watson. And the Watson uh, is my grandmother's, on my mum's side, uh, surname. Or was her surname. And it doesn't have any pockets in it, so you would have to put a uh, some kind of a stitch pouch in there as well. But it does hold lots of stuff. It's a really cute bag. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to be making lots more of these. And there are going to be a bunch going into the shop. So these are quite small. I do have another size I've made, which I will show you. Um, they have like a four inch bottom. There's plenty of room in the bottom. And uh, I think this is like seven by seven, something like that, maybe from the, the top here to there. If you open it up, I think it's definitely, you know, you could leave it open if you've got a lot of stuff in it. But anyway, so what's inside and stop talking about the bag. So the beachcomber is again on my hand dyed yarn and this is called Sandy Beach. And Sandy Beach is going to be going into the shop as well when I do the update. So it's a beautiful color, which looks like the beach. And I combined two colors to get that color. And this is the Beachcomber socks. Are they not the nicest thing ever? Now these are supposed to be those little shells, you know those twirly shells that you find on the beach? I think she called them conch or something. So this is what these shells are on the beach. And these are supposed to be all the little shells that you find on the beach. <clears throat> but she did say too, a lot of people had said that these look like whale fins, tails or whatever, which is right, they do. So there is nothing on the back. So this is how the yarn knits up plain. And I've just on the heel flap, which is the regular slip one knit one. I did actually read that one. <laughs> so that is the heel flap. So I do have, so how do you count your heel flap? Like I don't take off, I've done like the purl row or the knit slip knit row. I don't count them anymore because I've done them that often, I know. Now you can either, in this instance, it says I need to do 16 rounds of the, the two rows. Um, so sometimes I will count the big stitch, the big slips. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This will be 13 and I have to get to 16. Or other times I count the, sl the slip lines at the back. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. How do you do it? Tell me how you do yours. <clears throat> or do you write them all down? Like I said, I've done it so often now, I don't have to. But isn't that pretty? I think it's really pretty. So that's the Beachcombers, which is my Tuesday night project, or Tuesday project, because you know, there's a football game on on Tuesday, which quite often there is, well, I'll have to watch it, won't I? In the new bag. Um, Wednesday is dishcloth night. Now this is the very first bag I ever made. And let me just straighten it out. <laughs> I've had this so long. Um, and this was, I made it. Um, this is the Netherwood bag. And Netherwood was my um, maiden name. <clears throat> and so this is the Netherwood bag. And I made it with dog fabric because, of course, of Toby. And uh, it is the zippered top and it has lining with a pocket. 
And I've done tons of these in all different fabrics. I've got a great one for when I'm at the trailer, which has trailers on it. Um, and it's around about the same size as this one. Although it doesn't look it, but it is <clears throat> for getting stuff in it. So in this is the dishcloth, which we are making from our group on Facebook, Toby Knits and Friends, the Sugar Cube dishcloth which looks like that and it is a free pattern i found this on pinterest and <clears throat> i am using brene handicraft in emerald this one is knitting up much nicer than the last one did so it must have been the yarn and this is what this one looks like. It's really hard because of the light coming through to show you the pattern, but you can see the little. <laughs> I made a mask. <coughs> anyway, that's Wednesday nights, and that what that's what I cast on and stitched last Wednesday. So I got that much done. So I figure if I can do, which I think is about one, two, three, four, two rounds, two, not two rounds, two, what do you call them things? Two, help me out girls, pattern repeats, <laughs> thank you. Um, so that's two pattern repeats two full pattern repeats. So um, I figure, I think we need to do six. So I figure that um, I should definitely get this finished in the month, probably even before my dad comes, which is in two weeks, two weeks today. Um, <clears throat> so that's Wednesday. Thursday <coughs> is the, I think they're in this one. This is Thursday, yes. So again, here's another Netherwood bag. And these were pretty cats with a gold kind of fabric on them. <coughs> and this is the cure. <coughs> oh gosh, sorry. Maybe I'll have one of these. These are my favorite little things. They are licorice drops. And I get them at Mrs. McGarrigal's. It's a British shop. And they come in a little tin and I can't even get that on. So if I eat this, maybe I won't cough because I need my voice to be, you know. Um, oh yeah. <clears throat> so Curious Handmade has got out this thing called the Handmade Sock Society. I kept calling it the Secret Sock Society last week, but it's not. And um, <clears throat> this particular sock that was released last Thursday is called um, the shadow box and all the socks. So you get a new pattern every month from now until November. Um, and it's all to do with like the um, curio cabinet. Imagine if you've got a cab, like we have a drawer. We have a drawer that, that we shovel sort of precious things in there. I even have in my drawers in the bedroom, I even have one of my grandmother's uh, diaries, like a little agenda thing. And she's written in it. You can see, I forget even what year it is. And she's written in it, like when people have come to visit her, she uses her initials and she would write the initials. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she didn't have to write my initial and I live next door. <laughs> um, so this is the yarn I'm using. And this is not my hand dye. This is from my stash. And I got, I don't know where I got it, to be perfectly honest with you. 
I do not think the person is dying anymore because I did try to find her on Facebook and Instagram and Etsy and everywhere to tell her I was using her socks on my video. But this is the dyer and this yarn is called Mermaid. And she is Island Fiber Dyes. So this is the shadow box. Isn't that cute? And it's the first time I've made socks with the pearls, the main stitch. And there are holes in it, as you can see. It's very thick and squishy. And I am the same place as the other one. I am just on the heel flap and turn. Now, this one confused me. I, did, I know there's one or two of you who purchased the, uh, I took it out because it was annoying me. I was crunching too much, <clears throat> but at least it moistened my voice. Um, so this one confused me because the way she said, we just slip a stitch, slip the last stitch to work, turn your work and knit the wrong side. So I couldn't understand what that meant because usually you do your heel flop on needle two and you start from with it facing you. And anyway, I couldn't figure it out. I did take the extra stitch off like I was told. So I am only on 31 stitches here to do the, um, you know, the rest of it. But uh, I hope I've done it right, but you know, I can rescue it. I understand how socks work. So that is um, Shadow Box by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And that is Thursday night. Friday is the Scrappy V. No, it's not. Friday is my favorite blanket. This is a crochet bag I made forever ago. Ever and ever ago. I can't even remember. Probably about eight, nine, ten years ago. And um, it has handles. And I even lined it. <coughs> but this is where the blanket is and the two colors I'm using are my favorite so far which I did hand dye I love this one actually I love this one okay I think I like that one more no I like this one more no I like this one more no this one no yes no anyway and we are on the part of the, the 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 pattern part now where we're doing little pattern in it. And look how they're both knitting up together because we do hold them together. So they're two 50 gram balls that we are holding together. And let me see if I can show you the whole thing. Here is the whole thing so far. Ooh. So each month we've gotten a different color to dye and a different section to knit. Most of it is straightforward. It's just garter stitch <clears throat> where we just add an extra stitch at the end of every row to get the V. And it's at this point now where we are staying with the same amount of stitches, but we are making these little holes in the middle. This side is still increasing but this side is not, this side is decreasing. So I'm trying to remember how this is gonna work because I think, I don't even know. I don't know, it's supposed to be an oblong, I think. I've tried to figure it out because obviously that's a corner. So if it goes that way, I don't even know. <clears throat> But anyway, I am enjoying making this very much. It's, it's super easy just to sit and uh, watch TV and just knit, 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 you know, and all that. So it's a very nice, easy pattern to follow. Um, and she's doing this on a regular um, 
YouTube channel every two, every month. She puts out a thing every two weeks, but the blankets once a month, if that makes sense. <coughs> so yeah, go check that out. And she'll show you how to dye and the instructions for the blanket. There's no patent. You just have to follow her instructions. But if you're a patron, there's a patent. Anyway, um, Saturday, I have the Scrappy V, which is in another bag I made, but didn't really like the way it came out. It's okay, but it wasn't what I wanted, so that didn't become a bag. And I'm loving the Scrappy V, totally loving it. I am using yarn from... Um, Ellie Jones of Craft House Magic that I got all last year. I subscribed to her mixtape minis and you get a 50 gram, no you don't, you get five 20 gram balls of yarn each month and they each one does form a little, you can knit them all together like a little group ing of colors. So <clears throat> where is it? Let me get it the right way. So this is the Scrappy V, and we have a V-neck. We had some, um, what do you call them things? German short rows. We then broke off for the sleeves, which are gonna be short sleeves, and then I am now on this part so it's just about not quite at my belly button yet but I'm loving it and these are the, the new colors I put in uh, I put this one I think this one and this one since you last saw it I think um, I definitely did these two and half of that isn't that pretty? So these, um, yeah, I really am enjoying it. It's going to be fabulous when it's finished. <clears throat> and I forget the name of the Scrappy V lady <laughs> who designed it. So I will put that there and I will I'll leave links below to it. And so that is, is coming along. So I do that on Saturday nights. Love that one. So yeah, I worked on that last night because it is Sunday today for me. And Sunday, so tonight, I get to work on the crochet cardigan, the hexagon crochet cardigan. Now, this is again in my hand eye yarn. So this yarn is the um, Ontario Spring. This is 100% merino beautiful and soft and this is the one i'm holding with it or doing every other round i'm doing two rounds of each color put it that way and this is sky blue that i dyed up and will be going in the shop so it's very very pretty blue to go with that <clears throat> and this and this is what I love about the crochet. When you get to the end of your round, and that's the end of that color, and you break that color off and start a new color, um, you don't have to worry about it. So um, this is the wrong side, and I'm turning every time I finish a round and then going back the other way. So you don't, so this is the front. So it keeps it nice and straight and solid. So it, it's a hexagon. <clears throat> I couldn't remember the word last week. Remember I was calling it octagon and all kinds of things. And I love it because in my head, I imagine two colors of blue, two colors of the um, multicolored, two colors of blue too. So I imagined distinct color lines, <clears throat> but when it was knitting, crocheting up, there isn't any. And the reason for that is because the multicolored also has blue in it. So it doesn't, you don't see a complete change of two 
if you know what I mean, of the two colors. So <clears throat> this is fingering weight. Normally, you can do this pattern in any weight yarn, in any size hook. I'm doing this in the fingering weight, 100% merino, so it's not sock yarn. And um, although you could probably use sock yarn if you wanted, this is just the same. Um, but this is a bit softer because it's gonna be on you, right? Um, and a four millimeter hook. And this is um, the only thing with this, because most of the patterns I've seen, and there's a whole Facebook page just for this crochet hexagon cardigan, um, a group, is most people do it in a DK or a worsted weight with a bigger needle, like a six mil. So it goes very quickly, because a lot of people said, it's a very fast knit crochet, whatever you call that. Because I'm doing it in the fingering weight, it's much slower. So just bear that in mind if you want to do something similar. Much slower. Um, because it's smaller and I've got more clusters than the bigger yarn would have. Now the way this works, and it's kind of ingenious, is because it, how does that become a cardigan, right? <clears throat> you fold it in half here. You will seam down there. And there's your cardigan. There's your sleeve. And there's your body, your back and your front. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make two of these once I've got to the size I want that will fit me because obviously that's not gonna fit me yet. So once I've done a bunch more rounds, I will work on a second one of these and then you put them together and depending on how um you want it to work you can put on a big neckline um, you can add rows at the back to make the back bigger so it goes around you more you then could if you didn't want the sleeves to be like loose like that you can carry on doing clusters down taper them down and do a cuff and then this, if you didn't want it the length it was by the time I'm finished my rounds, you can then go all the way around adding more, which I think I'm going to do in the blue, just the plain blue and the plain, plain blue here, and then the plain blue around the neckline. So that's how you do the granny hexagon cardigan. Now, the other fun thing is, like, look at that. If I left, if I stopped now, made a second one like this, that's a baby cardigan. No more baby blankets now. Let's make hexy cardies for the babies. Anyway, so that is my Sunday night. I should be working on this tonight after I've made my supper. I've just finished watching F1. It's a very boring race. It was just very boring. But anyway, <clears throat> that's how I do my stuff. So, shop update. I will be putting Blue Sky and Sandy Beach in the store. Um, there's already the, the May and the June colorways for the flowers. June is rose. It's so pretty. Um, they're already in there. And the new bag will go in. What was the other thing? Oh, I didn't show you the other bag. So this one, let me just, let me add something to it in here. Hang on, bear with me. Oh, this bag, uh, Ellie from Craft House Magic made. I bought that from her and uh, ages ago, actually. So let me put this in so it gives you an idea of what you can get in this one. <clears throat> so this one was the first one I did and I love this size, and this is a, a really cute bag. I love it. But I also made another one, just a little bit bigger. And it's got hedgehogs on. Hedgehogs and mushrooms. And same thing. I, and so the difference with this is I added more to the bottom of the bag because there you can see otherwise how it would be. So I added more fabric to the bottom of the bag and made the lining all the same. Again, there's no pockets in these yet. I might figure out how to do the pocket in there. But um, 
<laughs> so cute. I love these little bags <laughs> so much. So um, I have another one I'm going to put in the shop like this. I might put both of them in or I might keep this one. <laughs> um, so there'll probably be one or two of this design, uh, this fabric and design going in. And I also have another one that has some more fabric that had, which I think I'm going to make in this, that has hedgehogs as well, but it's all blue with uh, funny little hedgehogs on it. So, and then of course I got ton more fabric downstairs. I'll more than likely make a bunch all at once and then load them in the shop at the same time, uh, probably next weekend um, or this weekend for you because this is Monday for you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> that is all I have to tell you. I'm really sorry about the coffin and the little sweet. But, and I think the thing of it is, like I'm fine most of the time. I don't cough much um, till I talk. And as I've been talking to you for 41 minutes, it was bound to happen, bound to happen. Anyway, I hope you have a fabulous week. We are going to go up to the trailer tomorrow to get it all set up and ready. Um, and uh, yeah, then I have a lot of sewing to do. Okay, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Oh, that was awful. Let me try that again. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.